Hey, Will and anyone else who wants to add a subdomain for emailing through Go High Level, uh, this video is for you. Okay, so it's a great question. And I think as far as the training goes in Go High Level, they show you how to add a top level domain. And the assumption is if you can do the top level domain, you know how to do a subdomain. But that's kind of a big leap. And it's something that I know just from, uh, I've been managing websites for myself and people and a long time. And so I've kind of learned it over time and it's second nature, but you're a fast learner. And, and once you see this, it's going to be like easy, you'll get it. So what I've done, I've just gone into my go high level account here. And I'm in the agency view, and then I've gone to settings down on the bottom left and then email services here, right? And so just click add domain. Okay. And then let's just put in something. It doesn't have to be mail. Like I've said mail in the other ones, but honestly, I could probably shorten that and just put in M, M dot, uh, I'll actually do this with you. Uh, all right, so put in a domain that you own, okay, and that you can get to. In this case, Home Service HQ is the one I'm going to use. Uh, that's a domain that I have that is for doing leads in this business and stuff. Okay, so a subdomain just means that you've added something in the before the domain piece. The, instead of www, which is actually a subdomain, you've replaced that with something else. So in this case, it'll be M. It could be mail, could be whatever you want. Okay. Any word basically. And, you know, can't be like special characters on your keyboard and stuff like that. I think you get that. So let's do M. Okay. And then I'll just say add and verify. It's not the most obvious screen there, like what you're supposed to do. I honestly hit that button the first time I did this and was like, oh, I hope this works out. And, uh, and it did, it's fine. But so, okay, this is what I was talking about in the other video where go high level, give you a bunch of information to add in your DNS in your name server. Okay. All the different records. And so now what we're going to do is take this information now in the type field, it just tells you what kind of DNS record to create. This is going to be the name. This is going to be the value. And then that's it. Once we've added all of these, we can just click this blue button down here to say verify domain. So let's do it now. Uh, so M dot is going to be our host name. I need to create a text record. We'll just work down. Okay. I'm just going to copy this to my clipboard. Okay. I use Cloudflare. Your domain manager may look different if you're using GoDaddy or name host or one of those. Um, it's okay. Like you just have to get into where you've done your, uh, name service for a website or that kind of thing before get logged in there, get to the place where you can see the records that you have. It could be some, you know, pointing to something. If you've created a go high level site, then you probably already know what I'm talking about, right? You'll see the same things I do, which is the IP address that you point your homepage to. Okay. And then everyone has some version of a add record button. Okay. And then once we do that, then it's just the type, right? So that first one is a text record. So we'll just do text. And then the name is M. Okay. And most of these just sort of add your domain after that. So you don't have to sort of write all the other stuff, your domain every time. Um, so I'll just go over here. We copied that, right? Paste. Save. Okay. So that looks good. If you use Cloudflare, then I'll. I'll show you which ones need to be orange cloud and which ones don't, but, um, don't worry about using Cloudflare. There's no need to get.
get into the weeds with Cloudflare and why I use that. Um, okay, so the next thing is another text record. Now, this one's kind of a full name, so I'm going to hit copy on the name. And let's add another record. Sorry, I'll go as fast as I can here. Text, paste the name, go back over, copy that stuff. Okay. Paste that, save. Okay. Next, C name. Okay. So this one is going to be email.m. So we'll copy that. Add record. Now this time we're looking for C name. Okay. Just going to paste that in. And this time it's going to be mailgun. Copy that. I'll copy and paste in here. We're all used to that. Okay. And then this, I believe we need to leave the proxy status off. Let's save. Okay. You probably won't have to deal with that if you're not using Cloudflare. Index record 10. This stuff. Okay. So M dot and MX. Okay. All right. So add record MX. So this is the mail records. Right. Keeping it easy here. Just a lot of copy and paste. Here. Okay. And then this is the one where we want to give it a 10 and say, we do another one of those. Okay. And that's going to be just M dot home service. Here, so we'll copy that. And well, let's see if there's a way I can figure out how to speed up this video while I do all of this stuff. But and then this, they want this one 10 as well. So we'll just hit save them. Okay. That's all of them. All right. So the thing with domain changes is that it will take them a while to propagate through the internet. They say, wait 24 to 48 hours, but most of the time this stuff starts happening pretty quick. But what will happen is probably what you'll see me do here in just a second. I've got all of this. I'll hit verify. Domain not verified. Okay. Okay. So then I hit it again. I'm not like pausing the video here, but now you can see four of the five are verified. Hit it again. Okay. Now they're all verified, but I still got the domain not verified. It's just because there's so many different servers around the world where this stuff has to get to. Okay. So just keep hitting that and then you'll get to this screen once everything is successful. Okay. And then what will happen is they have to add an SSL certificate. Okay. So I apologize for the noise. Okay. Somebody's printing something to my office. Okay. So now that you've done this piece, then you have set it up in go high level. The next step is like I mentioned in the other video, you just want to be sure that you are when you're in your sub accounts inside of your automations, you just want to be sure that your email from is set right. So if you're doing something like your name at email address, right? Or info, then in this case, it would be info at m dot home service hq.com to match what we just set up, right? So it's just got to match. It's just got to be something at the subdomain you just created.com. Okay. And then last but not least, if you want to kind of follow through on the rest of the setup pieces, then that's all stuff that kind of happens between this other easy DMARC site or probably, you know, Googling, you might be able to find some other alternative places that give you information about this, but 
you can scan your info here. So M dot. Okay. So like I mentioned in the other video, uh, go high level has you set up the SPF, but then some of this other stuff is missing. Right. And so in the end, it just affects your deliverability a little bit and your open rates and stuff and, and staying out of spam. That stuff can all still happen anyway, but you might as well give yourself the best possible chance. Right. So if we click on the DMARC thing here, then it's just going to say, oh, it's not found. Right. So we just go to this generator. Now, the only reason I'm showing you this is because this site doesn't really show you what to set up inside of your domain name server stuff. So here's our number or here's our domain, right? Our subdomain. Let's just send the reports to info at m.homeservicehq.com. I will tell you, make this report send to domain the same as the subdomain or top level domain you're using. If you try to use something else, then you got to add other records and been there, done that. It's not, not pretty. Subdomain policy, we can ignore that. Identifier alignment, they say, they recommend on this side to just keep it strict. Okay. Uh, that sounds fine to me, 100%. And send the failure reports. Uh, I don't think we need that, so. Boom, see, it's that easy. We They give you a warning here, but I think it's just because we're not using their service, so. Oh, this is what we did wrong. Okay. Policy type. So this is where we want to use quarantine or reject. Just choose one of those two. I just say reject. Okay. This just means that if somebody tries to email on behalf of your domain in a bad way, right? Like sometimes people do that stuff on the internet that you're recommending to them to just totally reject that kind of email if that's what. Google or Yahoo or the domain people think is happening. I think that's what it means. Um, okay. So let's hit generate. Okay. So now we're down to one warning here and this just relates to using their service. Okay. So now what we do is we just copy this. Okay. And we go over here and we've got to add another record. All right. And it's going to be a text. Okay. And then it's going to be underscore DMARC. Um, if you want it at the top level domain, you just stop there and then you add your stuff. But since we created a subdomain, then we just do a dot M since that was our subdomain. Okay. Paste. So then it looks like that. And then we just kind of do the same thing for these others. So we've got DMARC. Let's go to the DKIM. Okay, we're back. I had to pause and figure that DKIM stuff out real quick because I didn't remember that. And the reason is because we don't have to create or generate a custom one for that. It's already done. So just looking back at when we were setting things up, this one called domain key.m is our DKIM record. And so when we go in here and type it in, uh, you may run into the same thing. As I am right now where it doesn't pick it up yet. That's just because these changes haven't propagated through the internet yet. So you may have to wait a day and then check again. Okay. So yeah, it's still, still hasn't picked it up yet. When it does, then you'll get a green valid thing here. And I was just checking back with earlier domains I'd done. And I was like, I don't remember doing a generator thing here. And I didn't, so you won't have to either. Just, just wait a little while and then that will check out. Then the last thing is this BIMI piece. And honestly, you don't need it like I said before. It's, it's not something I went ahead and did it, but it was honestly 
a little painful. So basically is a process of getting your logo image converted into an SVG and then converted into some format that they use and hosted on your web server. You probably host it in the media file section on your go high level. And then just as anywhere you can get a link to it, that's got a HTTPS link. And then you paste that stuff in here in this generator where that logo location is. And then, yeah, you can see uh, my address there and then hit generate. We don't, if you have a trademarked brand, you can actually do the BMC certificate and there's instructions on how to do that down here. And that's, that's like the ultimate ultimate, but you'll get 10 out of 10 up here on your status for your domain, even without the BMC certificate. So I don't even think you probably need it. I just did it, uh, just for fun, I guess, cause I was in here, but that's everything, you know, once this DKIM checks out, then you'll be at eight of 10. And I think that's all you need. So.